was like from 2015 when I was running. I used to have this set up as a operation. I was doing that before I switched over to the teaching. Pump is here. It's pulling, moving here, bringing it to this the the B filter here. That's good. Yeah, basically you simple. Set you're cycling right now. Yeah, right now it's cycling, cycling, and getting it prepared for the fish that are in the um, the other nursery. Gotcha. It's a nice tank. Backwash so you're right over. Holding there. on to your backwash water. Yeah, I'm gonna hold it on. Yep, and I'm gonna put more tanks going around, and then mineralize it, and then good. use it for something else. Good, 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 yep. good, good. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So. Any any of any operations like this should have um, any time the the beads have solid crap on them, mm -hmm. and you backwash. Right. All that should go to you know hold on to it. Right. That's okay. Feed in, mm -hmm. and if if you can turn that into a crop, you got to do you, it. You're right. You, you owe it to yourself and your pocketbook to do that. Okay. Um. So yeah, and. 5 PSI, 4 PSI here, mm -hmm. that's fine. Okay. Um, if it jumps up to 5 or 6, you know, in a, in a couple of days, you mm -hmm. know that, that there's some crap in there. That's okay. Plugging up all of the um, the spaces between the beads. Okay. So then that, that'll just be your indication for a backwash. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, um, if your normal operating pressure is say 2 PSI mm -hmm. and it jumps up to 5 or 6 and your water gets crystal crystal clear what is happening is that all the fine solids are being captured inside of your beads mm -hmm. now you come in and you go hey my water's crystal clear this is great and then the next day your water looks like crap mm -hmm. but you didn't do anything you didn't change anything mm -hmm. that means that there's a channel that was created in the beads. So the beads got too clogged and they began to channelize. Okay. So, And that means that you need to backwash more, more frequently. frequently. Okay. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. And, mm -hmm. so, um, and we can definitely talk about that with the smaller uh, okay. bubble beads. So well, I can okay. kind of show you how that works. Okay. Uh, but for this, it's always a balancing act when you get the fish inside of the tank and you start feeding, how often should I backwash? Because remember, you're not just maintaining for clear water, you're also maintaining the bacterial population on the beach. Right. And so if you don't backwash enough, enough. Mm -hmm. you end up maintaining an environment for a type of bacteria that are faster growing than you don't want inside. Hey, you're talking about heterotro heterotrophic, yeah, heterotrophic back bacteria? Heterotrophic bacteria, mm -hmm. yeah. So you want your nitrifying bacteria right. uh, to be clinging to the beads. So that means that um, uh, not just your uh, water clarity, but your water quality, mm -hmm. um, you know, part of the biological filtration, that's that's a really important part, right? right. Your biological and clarification, which is why we call these things bio-clarifiers, mm -hmm. which is why they're so powerful in a, a single step. So what else we got going on here? Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is, this is nice. Yeah, this is pretty much it. We'll have good. Yeah, we'll have some vegetables in here pretty soon once we move these fish in here still about another four four weeks uh, we can show you the nursery right now show you the re the rest of the setup but uh which we'll be having some vegetables in here nice quite soon where are you draining on this one i, I see one here. yeah it's coming in here it's coming right back to the tank okay nice. it's yep it's coming right back here nice all right we can go take to take a look at the the shed in here all right okay all right hey. let me see hold on yeah, they already know, yeah. <laughs> they know it already, so. They're starving right now. That's when you hear me come in, starving. You can see it. Please feed me. Please feed me. So I'm gonna go ahead and add. Carlos over there feeding the beast. <laughs> you see it? Starving, feeding the beast. What are you thinking, Paul, man? You're looking, you're, you're staring. No, no, I'm, I'm just looking at the fish. They look good, they look nice and healthy. And you can pull and you can shake them. And then you can use the jars, the McDonald jars, and if uh, you're thinking about doing that. Uh, but you can, they basically mimic um, what the fish are doing, right? So. You're talking about like a tumbler? 
Yeah, tumbler. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. is, it, so, is it really obvious to see that they have eggs in the mouth? They, 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 yeah, yeah. When you start seeing it, and you start to be able to pick it out. And you go, oh yeah, look at that female, look at that female. Um, and they, they swim a little bit more, uh, they swim a little bit differently, um, and they hold their mouth a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so they'll they'll change color a little bit when they're ready to start breeding. I see some of them in there are, are starting to get that mm -hmm. bit of a red color to them. Yep. And they can, when can they actually get, ha, start breeding? Like what age? I think it's like three months in. Yep, three months for, in yep, for the females. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's about three yeah, or and four months, not, right? Yeah, and then you can, let's say you get two, three hundred uh, viable eggs uh, out of a female. Uh, you can start finding good females. Then you can have a brood stock that you hold on to in a tank like this. And then you can start breeding that female, and if that female produces 70% males, you got a really good female. Mm -hmm. you know? How are you able to verify they're producing 70% male? The sex them, man. The sex them. Yeah, you're gonna learn that. that <laughs> yeah, you go. I was gonna be in here. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You, um, you know, um, I've used clove oil uh, to knock the fish out or to slow them down. Yep. Anesthetic. Anesthetic. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so. You can put it in the water. It doesn't hurt the fish. Right. It just slows them down a little right. bit. Right, right, right. And uh, it smells like patchouli oil. So it's, you know, it's a smell. I, I smell it so much. It gets on your hands. It's not a big deal. Fish are totally fine with it. But what you do is you you turn them over. Um, kind of, they're kind of knocked out. You turn them over, and then you can real quickly look at their gonads and figure out whether they're a male and female, mm -hmm. or a female. And you. You do that in a couple of different ways, but uh, a, a quick way to do it is with some food coloring that just kind of shows the margins of yep. the gonads. And then once you say, all right, female, they go into this tank mm -hmm. here, male go into this tank, tank here, yep. and that's how you grade them. Yep. Uh, what color uh, food color do you recommend to do this testing? I always use red. We you use the red? red? I use the um, violet. I have some violet, violet huh? Yeah. Okay. Some, yep, yeah, right here. That's the stuff, huh? Yeah, I need some of this. I mean, all yeah, it'll work. And you will, uh, you will get poked even when they're knocked out. They'll still poke you, so your hands will be. You know, I use a glove. <laughs> yeah, I'm using a glove. Yeah, I'm not. I'm using a glove for these sloppy. Man, those little, those things. Their spines will get you, man. Man, you those things hurt. Yeah, you grab those things, and it, especially when they get. Excited and they yeah. stick them out real hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. That thing hurts. And even when you knock them out, they still have a couple of violent. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do a lot of fishing when I catch the bluegills. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I experienced that right there. Oh yeah, that thing hurt. Yeah, man. Now, why are some of these fish like I can see some of them, the tails are a little pinkish or the uh, rather the head or the face is pink, kind of pinkish color? Why is that? That's what I'm thinking is our females and they're they're ready to start breeding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, they definitely start changing. The color patterns start changing. Yeah. Especially the temperature's warming up and they're getting a, a maturity. Right. Yeah, the color patterns start changing. They're pretty much ready. Yeah, these guys are yeah, these that guys right are there. yep, look at that one, yep. Nice coloration on that. You can see that. So, how what inch average inch size are they when they have three months old? Um, how old are these? These guys are about three months. These yeah. guys are about three months old right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'd say that's a four to six an inch. Yep. Inch. That's what it is. Yep. Absolutely. And this is really when you start to have uh, the the size disparity between males and females. Mm -hmm. You really start to see males will get much much uh, larger. Much more aggressive, um, yep. especially in um, in tanks that aren't stocked very densely. What yep. the males will start doing is they'll start uh, nesting. They'll do some nesting behavior where they'll go into an area and they'll start to kind of carve out where they would build their nest for a female, and then they start to be real aggressive with all the other fish. So if I was a, if I wanted to do aquaponic. Mm -hmm. What is the main reason why I want to find out which one's a female, which one's a male for my aquaponic system? Well, the males uh, grow faster yeah. and they grow larger. Yeah. So if you want a pan-sized filet, 
you will want to mail. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. And part of that has to do with just the yield that you get from the fish. So the tilapia is uh, about 30, maybe 35 percent yield. When I say yield, that just means that the flesh of the fish that's edible is 35 percent of the animal. Okay. Right. So when I'm doing fillets, I get two fillets those end up being about 35% of the total weight of the animal. Uh, some fish are 40, some fish are even 45. Uh, but with tilapia, you want to get them to a size large enough, so that's that pound and a half, to where you can get um, that yield that's plate size. Okay. So that's really what you're looking for. So that's why Absolutely. you want to do males. Now really, the reason we love tilapia so much is because they're eaters. Right? Mm -hmm. They're eaters, they're poopers, and they're not repines. That's great. That's what we want. Um, but if you're really looking for that, um, that fish production, you need to grade and you need to, uh, you need to have a majority male population mm -hmm. so that you can get the plate size fish. Yeah. How, does, uh, how does having... So if I was doing out there, would you recommend me to have more females in my fish tank for, to benefit my vegetables or more male? To benefit the vegetable. That's that's up to you for your production. Okay. Yeah, that's totally up to you. If uh, yeah, I work with a lot of folks that they don't mind um, if uh, they never have a fish harvest. Yeah, that's, that's totally that's up to them, yeah, right? So people, yeah. it's you know species dependent, right? Mm -hmm. um, really, it's just they want to look at the fish, they yep. see the so, fish. It's a lot of people like now, that. Now, yeah. for me, I'm a fish person. What I would be doing is I would be breeding. I would be grading, mm -hmm. and then I would be looking for uh, the minimum amount of time that I can get the fish to uh, that pound and a half size so that I can have a yearly harvest, maybe 12, 14 months, mm -hmm. um, I can get that harvest. And then what you can start to do is have staggered harvest yep. and that's so that you can always have fish always, that yep. are ready to be mm -hmm. harvested every three, four months mm -hmm. maybe. Yep. And when you get that, um, you have, let's say you have a, a, a catastrophic loss. You lose power, something goes wrong, the fish gets sick, something happens. You have that, um, and you have uh, replicated or isolated systems, you won't lose everything. Everything, yeah. Right? And yep. that's a big problem if you have one cohort or one group right. of fish at one age level. Right. And those fish don't make it. Yeah. Right? And you poured all this time and all mm -hmm. this money into that, and they don't make it. So, in aquaculture, I always say, and it's not me who says it, but it's always a good idea to have a backup for a backup. Right? Yeah. So we always have to have a contingency plan. Yeah. And and the multiple uh, age groups uh, kind of gives you that. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we have these here, and then we still have some this next starter groups here. Nice. Be growing nice. these out here. And then we'll take these out once they go in there. Then these guys will be ready to come back in here. Right. And we'll grow these up and do the same thing. We'll have a continuous harvest. We'll just keep going, right. keep producing. All right, to wrap this up, I have one more question. Now, I've always been curious about aquaponics because I like the fish more than I like the vegetables. Uh huh. I care about the fish more. I'm not going to lie. 60% <laughs> fish, 40% vegetables. I love to like, just having my favorite fish to eat when I yeah. deep fry it. Yeah, yeah. And if you know the Asian culture, yeah. they don't fillet. When uh, they get the fish, they eat the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and they pull it out and yeah, 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 yeah. That's all right. how we like to eat it. Alright, alright. So, if, I'm, if I have an aquaponic system, and if I have Males and females in there, should I be concerned constantly to check up to see which female is breeding right now in the tank? And if they're breeding, if I catch the symptoms, should I pull out that female and, and put them in a separate tank? In a production scenario, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. You want to get breeding females out. Out, yes. Out. yes. Um, and, and the reason is because you can get, um, uh, you know, potentially five, six hundred uh, new fish mm -hmm. from a single female. Okay. So one of the ways around in tank breeding is stocking more densely. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if you stock super densely, that just means more fish inside of the tank, same amount of gallons, mm -hmm. more fish inside the tank, you'll have 
less chance for females to be breeding in inside of the tank. Yeah. So, if, having said that, if you have a tank where there are females that keep breeding, um, I would get them out. Get yeah. Them out. I would take them out. Yeah. Yeah. And I would and I would hold on to them as brood stock. Mm -hmm. You know, that's part of the whole reason that perpetuates the cycle. Okay. So I should constantly check up on the. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That's part of, and so visual cues, like a color change, mm -hmm. um, they start swimming a little bit differently. Um, uh, a, a male that's constantly hounding one female, right. uh, that'll be another cue. Um, and and there'll, there'll be changes. Part of the important thing, if you're a fish guy, you need to be looking at your fish, staring at your tank, looking at it all the time, and figuring out what's normal behavior and what's abnormal behavior.